Okay, so Cowspiracy, Seaspiracy and What the Health, I'm sure you saw those films or at least you heard of them because they certainly made some noise. We are today with Kip Anderson and Cam Waters who are the creators of the new movie premiering this week in Argentina. So Kip and uh, Cam, welcome. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having us. To break the ice, was Jesus a vegetarian? Wow, right, right straight to it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you have to watch the film. What to expect in this film? On that particular point in the film, uh, yeah, we we go into historical evidence of a particular event in Jesus's life, which most everyone agrees actually happened, which is the temple cleanse, and particularly what was happening there that does apply to animals and a view of animals that the early, not only Jesus, but the early followers after him had that has just been lost to history. And particularly why is because the scriptures have been mistranslated around that event and what Jesus actually said in the temple. So that's what we uncover in the film. And why do you think, um, uh, as a devil advocate, I would say, uh, why wasn't he, if he were vegetarian, like more clear, like don't kill animals or don't eat meat? Well, I would say, You know, it's pretty clear thou shalt not kill doesn't have an asterisk that says just humans. So it's, I would say, more of a blanket uh, term terminology there. Uh, but again, we go into that in the film as well, why maybe it's not so clear. You've been keep uh, involved in activism for a long time. Uh, you know how lobby, meat lobbyists work and everything and the industry works. Um, were, were you surprised by something during the making of this film? Uh, yeah, with all these films, always really surprised. This one was a big surprise because of how far back it goes. You know, some of these, the other films, the conspiracies go back 50, 20, 50 years. This one goes back 2,000 years. And how it permeates through all of the entire world, these cover-ups that happened a long time ago. Um, and as far as surprising, there's a lot of surprises. You as the viewer, you'll see, you're going to be shocked. You're going to be, you know... Just, you know, we go to India and do and, and go undercover to the dairy industry. And that was shocking. And um, to the world's biggest public animal sacrifice, which was very shocking and revealing. So the viewer, along with us, it, it was truly an adventure of one after another after another of revelations. Uh, that was, uh, yeah, it's hard to pick just one. There's a lot of them, though. And now, Seaspiracy specifically was a great uh, success, and you had uh, this agreement with Netflix to do this movie. Is it true that he, he Netflix censored you, or, or he, what's, the, what's the deal, what happened with Netflix? Yeah, this was a re Netflix original. Initially, the film was called Cow Spiritual, <clears throat> and it's the third chapter. It's basically the film on ethics. But as Cam and I went deeper into this film, um, the more we got deeper into the Jesus story, the Jesus thread, And we, you know, the films, we go pretty hardcore at it. We go deep and we go uh, hold no punches. And it felt like they wanted a little bit more of a vanilla angle to the film. They wanted more of like how, how we all spiritually love animals. It felt that they really wanted to tone it back. And it would, so the deeper we went, the further we went, we were going deeper in. They were going a completely different way. And they did want to censor a few very important parts that they wanted to take out. And we, and between that and just overall, we were seeing a two different films. It got to the point where we both uh, mutually said, we're not going to be able to do this together. And, you know, I have tons of respect for Netflix, but there was a challenging film for them to put out. So we felt we need to tell the story how you see it when you watch this film. This is how it is uncensored and We left Netflix so you can watch this film <laughs> as you see it. And we feel it's worth it because it's very powerful and it's very important and impactful. Do you feel that it had uh, another repercussion or, or made a different kind of noise than the other movies because it, this, this goes deeply into the beliefs of people, you know? Yeah, I think when you're talking about, you know, one religion, you know, religion, especially when you know, like a company like Netflix, they get so big that you have a lot of people to answer to as well. Um, and religion is a sensitive topic. You know, when you're challenging someone's religion, 
it's not challenging someone's eating animals. <laughs> There's a lot of things there all come together, the animal agriculture industry. And so we're coming, you know, film challenges a lot of core beliefs and industries that have gone back thousands of years. So it's a, it's a quite a bit, you know, a sensitive, sensitive walk that we have to take. And, you know, I understand Netflix's concern with it, but, you know, things have to be done. And what's great about it now is that now we can release the film to the entire world. Before, only Netflix subscribers could watch it, and that was a big inspiration. After Sea Spiracy launched, only people who could watch Netflix see it. And there's m billions of other people. And so we realize now, hey, we want to release this to everyone in the world, no matter how much money you make, where you live, you can now be able to watch this for free when we do launch it online through a pay it forward method. I would add to that too, that whether you're religious or not, this film is really for everyone. We've had people from all walks of life respond to this film with their you know, jaws dropped at the information that's revealed. And it's particularly important to note that it doesn't attack religion in any way. It does show some hypocrisies and go into some, you know, aspects that may be a little bit challenging to what everybody's learned growing up. However, it's ultimately a film that shows how beautiful religion can be. It's really just these industries things that are twisting and utilizing manipulation for their, uh, manipulating religion for their own benefit. You, you mentioned the religion, the ethics, the culture, and in terms of the, this premiere in Argentina, I guess you know that Argentina, that meat for Argentina is very important. We have almost double the consumption uh, from comparing to other countries. For example, the U.S., it's 52 kilos per year, and we, uh, no, we, sorry, 52, and the U.S., 38, 32 Spain, so we almost double the consumption. So what do you think the challenge is it, for this movie or, or the questions that this movie raised for a culture that meat is so important for them? I feel a big thing that when people watch this and they have an open mind to it and an open heart is that they will realize that they're part, we have a part, there's, again too, when you're asking what this film is about, it's a massive adventure that explores not only different religions but explores the social impact of, of, of raising and killing you know, billions of animals the psychological impact, and also too, in the film, we there's this concept called the matrix, and people don't realize you're grown up into a very systemic tradition that have gone back thousands of years that you think you have a choice to your eating animals, but you're not. You've kind of been brainwashed, lack of a better word, by society that we should eat animals, and this is a good thing to do, and this is cool, or this is strong or manly for men, and in reality. It's kind of, uh, you know, you're kind of a. It's kind of being a meat puppet. You're kind of a puppet playing within this system, and when you see that, you can realize, really step back and be like, wait, what am I doing? Because there's a massive disconnect, and most people just don't even realize that they have a choice or there's a connection to this industry. So I think it's 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 a, it's empowering to realize. You have a you have a chance to be free from this uh, this this terrible industry. Yeah, I would I would say to that too. Maybe you know, quite some time ago, the gaucho culture and everything like that. Like there was maybe a survival element that was at play, but now in 2024, we have so much available to us and alternatives that we can choose other than you know, domesticated animals for consumption. And now the reverse has happened. There's so many people on the planet now and everything's kind of escalated in terms of factory farming, as well as, you know, grow the, the, the forest being destroyed, particularly in South America, that beautiful country, the Amazon and the Chaco forest, which we visit in the film. We're losing these beautiful natural habitats because we're trying to keep up with the level of consumption now in 2024 when we have another way. You mentioned the gaucho culture and it was my, my next question because I think that it's harder for men being vegetarian or vegan, at least in Argentina, than for women because the, it's, it's related to the macho, you know, like meat consumption is related to the macho. Here, if you uh, go to an asado uh, and you're a guy and you, you take your vegetables, it's like, you know, there's no macho, you, you gonna, you're gonna get jokes about not eating meat, it's strong meat, you know. What do you think about that? Do you have it also in the U.S.? 
Yeah, it is, but I feel it's transforming pretty quickly now because back in the day, it's another thing that's kind of eroding away, whereas before macho used to just mean strength because I can protect my women from, you know, from in war and from other animals, whereas now a, a man is a protector, a provider, someone who, 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 who is a giver and elevates those around them. And so when you're eating animals, you're destroying things. You're, not, you're doing the exact opposite of what you're supposed to be doing as a man of, of, of supporting life, of supporting and protecting, protecting. When you're eating animals, you're destroying. So, um, and also too, they've done studies where females find it very attractive for men who are, are, are compassionate, who have a heart, and that is the new that that is the new masculine. That is the new machos, compassion, and when he's saying again, and in enlightenment and liberation, liberating from this matrix. You know, if you you just really looked uh, highly upon, if you realize that you're 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 not a slave, and like you're a man, you can stand up. You're not going to go the flow of that everyone else does. You're standing up for what you really truly believe in, and that's macho. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Great. Uh Getting into also the Argentinian culture, you know that Pope Francis is from Argentina and he chose his name, uh, he chose the Pope name after San Francisco de Asís, who was like uh, his life, he devoted his life for the poor and he was, he's considered the first environmentalist because he, he wrote about uh, respecting all creatures made from God. And, um, you know, the, the, the monks uh, from, San, from Asís, they are vegetarian now. So first, how would you think uh, the Pope might mm, receive this movie? And if he should be a vegetarian too, if he follows, you know, the San Francisco at least message. I, I think the Pope should absolutely watch this film. And I visualize that he loves it because he's going to really realize who he truly is with that name and fully actualize what St. Francis of Assisi, one of my favorite uh, role models of, of life. I mean, I, I love that he chose that name. And, um, you know, St. Francis of Assisi, one of my favorite quotes from him is, preach the gospel at all times and when necessary, use words. And Christ's last words before he ascended to heaven was, preach the gospel to all creatures. So I think through action, you know, less words, more action for the animals. And I know he's already done so much with his Laudate Si and this and that, but this is, a, this is just the next logical step, I think, in the mission towards really honoring that tradition, the, the, the Franciscan tradition. And um, yeah, it's, it's going to happen. I see it happening in the future. In the movie, we see that you were being followed. Is there a case uh, open or an investigation like from that? There was a case. <clears throat> there was a case. Well, several cases. One is local in San Francisco. The San Francisco police. Cam was actually in L.A. when that happened. Uh, filed a case. But then also, too, in the bigger part in the story that you see in the film, we hired in, uh, a, a lawyer who specializes in investigating corporations he does foias uh where you can you can you can find emails and all these different documents that are hidden from the public but you can actually find them and so he did a six month investigation in the film it looks like it was only a couple weeks it was six months investigation to find out if there was any if there's animal agriculture industries different uh, uh industries within mostly the animal agriculture industries if they were following my previous films if there if there was any talking about our films and as you see in the film there actually was there's a link to that industry and in following me in my previous films whether they did this what well, you seen they're kind of giving it away we got ransacked we never found out who it was we don't know if it was someone from you know the church or the animal agriculture industry or someone from the a pharmaceutical industry i don't know there's definitely several people it could be, but we never found out. So the case is, case is open. I, we see the journey of Cam becoming like vegetarian in this movie. And what about you, Kip? What, what made you, what triggered to, to you to the activism? Well, for me, it happened about 16 years ago, even before Cowspiracy, when you watch that. I, I at the same, I watched a video. At that time, I was vegetarian, and I watched a video on YouTube that showed how dairy was made and how it took the baby cow away from the mother, and then how chickens, eggs were made. And I was eating, and at that time, Cam, have you heard this? I, I was eating a cheese pizza at the time, and right when I watched it, I threw it across the room, 
and I was just done. And it was so ethereal, so I could feel it in my bones. It was so easy, and it was so I just clicked. And um, and at, right at that very moment, I was I uh, I felt I was a voice for the animals. And then right then, I found out about all the environmental issues within within a week. Um, and then it became increasingly more of just really needing to feel like I need to raise my voice in any way possible. So it's been quite the journey. I must say that I was a vegetarian myself until I saw conspiracy and I stopped eating cheese. So thank you mm -hmm. for that. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> and um, the last questions, um, what challenges do you see for the animal movement in the future? Because uh, there's a famous phrase from, from Paul McCartney that said, if um, slaughterhouses had wall, uh, glass walls, everyone would be vegetarian. And now I think that social media gave us glass walls because you get to see everything. And I don't see the repercussion that I would have hope it, 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 it would have. Uh, what do you think about this? I'll say what happens is sometimes in any movement, it seems like you make a lot of progress and then it kind of goes two steps down. This movement relatively is very, very new because the animals haven't had their own voice. You know, in other movements, uh, women's rights, race, racial rights, they've been able to speak up, but the animals mm. haven't. So just, and only in like really, really the tw last 20 years have us as humans be able to be the voice for them. So it's a very, very new movement, but it's the fastest growing movement. And because of, like you said, social media, the internet, and just the truth cannot be hidden anymore, that you're going to see that right now, and it feels like the last couple of years has been slowed down. With this film and other things that are happening over the next couple of years, it's going to be an explosion of connection in all ways. And so I guarantee within a couple of years, you're going to see this like, and also too with the food system. The food system is evolving very quickly, so it's a lot easier. So I really believe this movement is just getting ready to take off, and in a way it already has. I was just going to say, um, yeah, the challenges that I see is, yeah, as this movement has picked up, obviously the first reaction is going to be the counter movements to, to this movement. And those have built some strength, you know, as people are trying to sort out and justify their actions and all of these things. Um, but over time, I think the arguments for protecting life are so strong that it's, you know, it's only going to be some time before the counter movements lose some of their steam again. And, you know, it goes in waves. But I do think particularly with Christpiracy, just coming from my own background uh, with spirituality and religion is I think that the movement itself for animal protection, animal rights has seen its different waves of, you know, the arguments about the environment, the arguments about human health, the arguments even about ethics to an extent, like you said, the glass walls. But I think breaking into this conversation about religion because there's 2.3 billion Christians worldwide, there's almost as many Muslims and many uh, other faiths that have conversations about this within their text but often the conversations aren't happening in real life right now. Uh, everybody wants to, you know, not really talk about it yet. And so I, I, I pray that this film helps further open that conversation so that these traditions can really honor who they actually are, which you'll see in the film is, uh, you know, something that honors life and animals in a profound way. And so I think this is the next big wave that will definitely carry us to a new place. And you were a member of the church. Yeah, I, I've seen it in the movie. I, what reactions did, did your friends, what did they say about the movie? Yeah, many people that have seen the film that are from church uh, in that background, you know, are ultimately really receptive. Even if they don't agree with everything immediately, they really appreciate the approach that was taken with the film. Kip and I don't preach in the film at all. We just ask questions, we go on a journey, and we genuinely try to find and see, as you'll see in the film, the, the, the motor uh, that's driving us along in the film is trying to find if there is a spiritual way to kill an animal. Um, and it's, you know, it's just a matter of seeing what we actually uncover to see and let the viewer decide what they think. So um, up to this point, we've received, you know, definitely there's people that push back, but I think ultimately the film is just here to ask questions. And so it allows the viewer to make a decision for themselves. Okay, and last, uh, can you send a message to Argentina encouraging, encouraging people to see the film? 
Uh, yes. Well, one, gracias for, for Argentina, everyone. Uh, I, I should be better at Spanish. But anyway, thank you so much, Argentina. You are going to absolutely love the film, no matter who you are, your background. It's the most wildest adventure. You're going to be shocked. You're going to laugh. You're going to cry. You're going to be transformed forever. So get ready. Hold on to your seats. And you're in for a ride. Yeah, absolutely. Get out and see the film. Find a way to, to, to watch it. You're going to really, really appreciate it. And uh, cheers, Sherba, Sherba Mate <laughs> over here. I'm drinking it. Wow. So I'm, I'm going to come down there one of these days and watch it with you all somehow.